only a little bit left of the second chapter of Oversee Under Stone by Susan Cooper. Um, Great Uncle Mary came back. Barney asked if he found what he was looking for. He told them that he didn't find it. We learned that the children's nickname for their uncle is Gummery. They decide to explore the house. The kids do because it's raining out. They find a hidden room with an empty telescope case in it and a porthole window. Then they think there's got to be another hidden room on top of it, and so they start knocking on the walls to see if they can figure out where that room is. There you are, said Barney, hopping with excitement. The landing only reaches to there, but the wall in here goes on for yards, right over your bed to the window, so there must be a room on the other side. Jane came back into the bedroom. The wall doesn't look nearly as long out there as it does in here. It doesn't, and I think that means... Simon said slowly, that there must be a door behind the wardrobe. Well, that finishes it then, Jane said, disappointed. That wardrobe's enormous, so we shall never be able to move it. I don't see why not, Simon looked thoughtfully at the wardrobe. We shall have to pull it from down low, so the top doesn't overbalance. If we all pull at one end, perhaps it'll swing round. Come on then, Jane said. You and I pull, and Barney hold the top and shout if he feels, over, if he feels it overbalancing. They both bent and heaved at the nearest leg of the wardrobe. Nothing happened. I think the stupid thing's nailed to the floor, Jane said in disgust. No, it's not. Come on, once more. One, two, three, heave! The great wooden tower squeaked unwillingly a few inches across the floor. Go on, go on, it's coming! Barney could hardly stand still. Simon and Jane tugged and puffed and blew, their sneakers slithering on the linoleum and gradually the wardrobe moved out at an angle from the wall. Barney, peering into the gloom behind, suddenly shrieked, There it is! There is a door! Oof! He staggered backwards, gasped and sneezed. It's all covered with dust and cobwebs. It can't have been opened for years. Well, go on, try it, panted Simon, pink with breathlessness and success. I hope it doesn't open toward us, Jane said, sitting weakly on the floor. I can't pull this thing another inch. It doesn't! Barney said, muffled from behind the wardrobe. They heard the door creak protestingly open. Then he reappeared with a large dark smudge down one cheek. There isn't a room. It's a staircase, more like a ladder, really. It goes up a sort of hatchway. And there's a light up there. He looked at Simon with a crooked grin. You can go first, boss. One by one, they slipped behind the wardrobe and through the little hidden door. Inside, it was at first very dark and Simon blinking saw before him a wide-stepped ladder, steeply slanting, rising toward a dimly lit square, beyond which he could see nothing. The steps were thick with dust, and for a moment he felt nervous about disturbing the stillness. Then very faintly he heard above his head a low, familiar murmur of the sea outside. At once the comfortable noise made him more cheerful, and he even remembered what they were supposed to be. "'Last one up! Shut the door!' He called down over his shoulder, keep the natives at bay, and he began to climb the ladder. And that's the end of chapter two.